she's not quite sure about him. And I'm going to yeah. record this so that if okay. something goes funny with the internet, I can always upload yeah. the recording. Yep. And let's see if I can oh. tell uh, how to start this to Facebook. Well, this is really fun. So, so it sounds like I was reading through some of the blogs on your website. It sounds like COVID really forced you to yeah. reappraise what's what. It and really so, did. Yeah. yeah. And so are you still in the cabin out in the middle of the woods? I am. You? Nice. Yep. Still here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, whatever needs to be um, completed um, is still in the throes of being completed as I would have moved by now. So that's how I'm seeing it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's very interesting um, about what's coming up and what isn't coming up and what's shifting through and what's staying and those kind of things. So it's really interesting. And it's funny because the pet loss has never left me, if you like. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay. So, yeah. So, and tell me a little bit more about being a celebrant. How, and, yeah. and so you're trying to teach or do yeah well, I'll just well, shut up and um, let you talk yeah <laughs> yeah no, no. <laughs> the celebrancy um covers um hand fastings and marriages and funerals but I have been concentrating on pet loss um and it's a bit like when I was writing my book I thought I'll see how this might work out who might be interested and those kind of things and then it it was like oh wow wow it is um, <laughs> I know, and I wasn't quite sure, but it's it's con conducting those ceremonies, and I've been doing them in the UK over the last few months, and people have found the ceremonies healing and honouring the life and love of their beloved. And the way in which I did the ceremonies was how I did um, my um, interviews with people for the book. So I interviewed people, and then I took them into a healing space, and I brought their beloved into that space with them, um, and for them to connect and to connect from that heart level. And then we um, we took them into to the essence of the animal, into their heart. And then we wrote poems about their relationship with their animal, and that hence that was in the book. So wow. I'd been thinking along the lines, well, if I can do that when I'm actually just doing that as research for the book, which I did, then I thought actually that would be really beneficial for people to, to do this. Um, you know, in, in, for real, if you like. But each ceremony that I do is bespoke to the person, the family, the animal, and that could include anything. So poetry, nature, flowers, personal stories, songs, and, and so much more. So it is like a, a, a funeral in its own way. And it, there doesn't need to be any reference to religion. If people, it's not about, you know, religion, it's about the heart and the heart space and connecting to the animal. So really we'd kind of meet initially and then we get an idea of what the person might like and how they want to spend time in that ceremony um i'd give them a copy of the service beforehand um so that they could be sure that their wishes were taken into consideration um if it's not in the uk because i've traveled but it would be over zoom or skype whatever suits good and so I'm you are doing these remotely that's awesome yeah 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 um and uh, my website ha doesn't have it on yet because i wanted to to undergo that kind of like research stage really and get right. a feel for how how it might um work in practice which is as i say um I did delay it because when I was writing the book, I wasn't quite sure how this might work out in practice, but actually then I'd kind of like thought, well, actually, if it worked out when I was interviewing people, it would just work out naturally anyway. Yeah. So that's the way in which I, in the way in which I did it um, so that people could honor that life of their beloved and honor the stories and put that into some kind of a poem or a song or something that just summed up. But I found that when, when I was writing the poetry, now I've never done poetry before, but when I was writing it, it really kind of opens, allows people to open up to their emotions without it having to be a set way in poetry. It didn't have to be, you know, um, yeah, all that poetry stuff we had to learn, right? The yeah. big pentameter yeah. and all those, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah and, um, and I think even I think when my editor asked me I was like I've no idea about this I don't know but this is you know this is heartfelt and it felt joy and you know it and it helps people to really connect with the essence of their beloved as if they were still here right now and it's something yeah. they can keep because they they wrote it in the book either the person wrote it or I wrote it and then or we wrote it so it was just um it was however they wanted to do it so it, it was bespoke um to them um and for them i think the main thing was so people could really feel the essence of their pet um was was still here because for me it's just like humans you say their name you think of them and the essence is there just like that right it never leaves it never right. yeah 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 that's um there's a, a book a friend of mine told me about called The Afterlife of Billy Fingers. I think that was yes, it. I you know that, that one? Yep. That helped yep. me tremendously when my mother was dying because mm -hmm. it's like, and, and I had all, you know, many of these concepts that made yeah. more sense to me than the Anglican church, but it was just so like, okay, I yeah. get it. Yeah, she's had, she's had a rough time in life yeah. um, and, unfortunately was an alcoholic but you know that yeah. doesn't mean that that's she doesn't have to have that suffering and yeah. penance later yeah so that was super super Absolutely. helpful book yeah. yeah and i think that's it um and what i've also found with pets is that you know when people say oh they they're getting well they're getting better um and things like that and i always think that's them showing us that this is how I'm going to be when I leave my body. This is how free I'm going to feel. This is how fun yes. I'm going to be and experience yes. that. So this is not sadness. This is joy. You yes. Know? Yeah. yeah. The freedom, the letting go of yeah. all the suffering that we we chose. <laughs> yeah. For lack of a better description. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. All right. So I, yeah. Cool. It's let me cool. let me take a mm. wee look at the. Facebook stuff and make sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> um, I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we're trying to use Zoom and the and because it is much better for an interview. But the first time I did it, it yeah. went to my um, personal page instead of to uh, oh instead oh. of to the business page, right? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Stream health. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is as set up as it's going to be. <laughs> so uh, evidently, I'm supposed to just push the button and hopefully it'll do the right thing. So good. Go live. Yeah. Well, this is so awesome. Um, what you're doing. I know. What do you want? What do you want? Yes. I know. It's, been, it's loud. It is loud. And Pepe is here. He's come to, oops, to join the show. Oh, there you are. He's like, not really. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much interest in going on outside. <laughs> well, and he's fed up because he can't get outside in this house. So he's he's really uh, kind of had it. And it, it is loud. We're on a busy road, so he's not quite all right. confused oh, about it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, bless. Yeah, they're oh. good. They're really good. Cool. Um, let's see. So, and and the way you started talking about the celebrancy is awesome. Um, so I'll ask you the, about that. Um, mm. Anything else you'd like me to highlight or bring out? I think just about how unique our own grieving process is. And although I've used the um, Elizabeth Cooper Ross's uh, seven steps, actually it's kind of like we can believe we are in acceptance but we could be in denial so i've used it as a reference point to show that actually because it's a a, um, a, a transient process it's not linear grief that actually we can think we're, we're okay and this that and the other and then the grief will bring us back it will bring us back to that beginning where we might think i can't understand why i'm getting so upset again <laughs> and because yeah yes because yeah. i thought i dealt with it and i thought i was over it and, and it's not it's that reminder for me it's that reminder of love yeah right on yeah right. yeah, yeah so and and we can't love so deeply if we and not expect to grieve so deeply either we just can't yeah 
Yeah, no, yeah. and that's very true. I mean, yeah. because, yeah, I get it. Because of what I did for a living and I had to euthanize so many pets, I got really yeah. uh, numb, numb to it. Yeah. In, then finally I had to sell the first practice I had. And with the second practice, I just, I couldn't do the euthanasias anymore because I refused to shut myself off. Yeah. Um, and it just, it was too much. Um, the most, I don't know, it's just, it's so weird, you know, to, to think of that, um, that, you know, and we, as veterinarians, we are able to mm -hmm. provide the ultimate relief of suffering. Um, yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't like talking about this, do you? Okay. That's no. okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's not surprising. Yeah. It's not a nice subject. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know, and I talk about it. Oh. I talk about it too much. Yes, we obsess with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. All right. So the. <laughs> I don't know if mine will be Yeah. Yeah, it, is, it is a tough Ms. subject, Millie. isn't it? And, uh, yeah, and I've got actually my um, uh, ex-husband's had a motorbike accident, so I've ha oh, I had to dear. go to a, a three-hour drive to pick up his dog, and I bought oh. her back with me. So they're both cockapoos. Um, but Molly, uh, Lady, the other dog, is more of a... Uh, she's got more poodle in her than yeah. Molly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... They're sat outside at the minute in the cool, so. Enjoying it, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, since it's cooled down a bit, you'd be nice to her. Okay, all right, you have to get down. Can you can you do this without wiggling? <laughs> okay, yeah. All righty, I think we are at the witching hour. Let's see if this Hi. is going to work. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, live. All right, this looks right. Ah, no, it's not. Oh, ah, now it's gone to my personal page again. Oh, it says it's been live streamed. Yep. Oh, okay. Hey there, I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts. I'm sorry, we're still trying to figure out the... Uh, the whole technology <laughs> thing of streaming into Facebook, and I have a really weird feeling it's gone into my personal page again. So we will give that a go. But at any rate, I am delighted to introduce you to Debbie McLeod. Uh, she is the creator of the Cosmic Crone, uh, which is an, a word I don't hear very often anymore. She is a spiritual mentor, a mystic, and an intuitive guide. And her unique approach really helps give a spiritual perspective on life, uh, gr loss, grief, and life transitions. And uh, she is a natural clairvoyant and empath and a medium combining those talents with coaching and intuitive and healing abilities. So that's a lot of stuff. And yeah. she's also <laughs> started to take on a new focus, which we'll talk about in a moment. But welcome, Debbie. So delighted to meet you and to chat with you a bit because the subject that you cover is something that most of us don't want to think about, but it is so very essential when we lose our pets. So can, can you tell me how you started down this path? I mean, yeah, well, yeah. Um, I started years and years ago um, on my, um, started with mediumship and I used to help and support people who had lost people. Um, and um, that was really satisfying and it was really, really helpful um, for other people to know that love lives eternally. Um, and then um, I'd always kind of like had, I've always been animal orientated, but um, if I was if I was speaking to somebody, I would say something like, oh, your little, you know, Jack Russell wants to just be remembered or say hello. Um, and that was as far as I went with the animal um, communication. And then we lost our beloved um, Doberman Inca. And I was talking to my daughter one night um, who was in deep grief. And I just literally felt these like um, these wings of an angel just wrap all around me. And it kind of like I thought, oh, oh, this is important. And I just knew that whatever I said now would be with the essence of Inca in mind 
um, as I was speaking to my daughter. And then after that, it just kind of like I got signs and synchronicities around animals and pets and um, all different things. And I just thought this is really important. And I thought, I think I might just put a little leaflet together for local vets and um, just, you know, so that they realize about how important animals are in our lives and, and to us and, and, you know, kind of like what happens when they leave this earth plane. Um, but it kind of never got to a leaflet because um, I decided that I was going to use poetry um, as the as the genre for for the book. And that had to come by another synchronicity. Um, and um, I just put it out on Facebook and asked people 2016 if they'd like um, to take part in this project I was doing. And they said yes. And so from there, the, the book was born um, and every synchronicity just fell into place um, from there. So it was like really it had started with the loss of Inca and Inca had come to me and um, to, to guide me to this next step of producing the book. That's crazy. So, so literally that sensation is what mm. prompted you to start talking with people about how they understood yeah. the loss of their pets and also to, to really start a, a healing project uh, in this yeah. book. Is that fair? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, yes. That's, um, that is amazing. So I wanted to show everybody Debbie's uh, website while we're sort of talking, um, yeah. The Cosmic Crone. And also she does have a book that, uh, that my internet doesn't want us to see for some reason. Um, so if the Amazon site loads, I'll we'll put the links for it in the. It should in be the, at the uh, bottom comments. of that thing. Ruth. Yeah. It, oh, rude. Okay, yeah, good, good. Ah, there it is. Very simple. Yeah. So if you click this, this will go to the UK site. But if you take out the uh, .uk out of the Amazon, oh. um, then it will take you to the yes US site. But this is really, I mean, golly, just so beautiful what you've been able to uh, to do with this concept, and really you've taken it. Uh, another step forward. Um, I, I think you. I read through some of the blogs you had posted, and it sounds like during COVID, you really started to get the message that really, no, stop doing that job and start doing these other things that will serve people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd, I'd always for, um, for I suppose for all of my vocation, I'd done everything. I'd worked, always worked, but I'd done everything else, not as a hobby, but aside from that, because I'm curious and I, I love to learn, and I'm, I'm just curious about life and um, blessings and all things like that. And I just um found this little log cabin in the middle of nowhere and thought I cannot do that journey um to this work anymore now and that just has to stop and I just sold everything up and then moved out to this little log cabin and it was and people used to say you must be crazy and it's like but I'm just following what I need to do I just need to be able to do this and to spend time by myself and really hone down what I really want to focus on for for the next few years you know, or the next weeks or the next months, who knows? Yes. Um, and just, uh, yeah, and do things that make me a lot more happier because I always feel I've been of service, but I wanted to take my service into a deeper level um, now and feel that I could do that and was ready to do that. Great. So that was most important, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I get it. I mean, my wife and I sold everything in 18 and hit the road because it was time for us to, to live a different life. And for that, yeah. I'm grateful. Yeah. So part of what has come up for you, though, is to help people. I mean, what you did with the book and your project was to help people understand mm -hmm. their grieving process. But beyond yeah. that, you've become a celebrant for uh, for the loss of pets, for their passing on to whatever is next. So how did you, how did you decide to go down that path? Well, in um, 2013, I decided that I wanted to become a registrar. And in the local um, borough where I lived, um, I applied, um, but they were inundated and they said, I'm really sorry, you've been unsuccessful. And I was like, oh, well, OK, but I'm not really a person that follows rules to the letter. So I was like, well, OK, maybe because that's very prescriptive. Maybe that's not for me. And so I, I kind of took it like that. And then it had just sat there. Then a few years later, I thought, I wonder what it's like to be a celebrant and kind of like 
just thought, oh, I'll inquire and start to, to look around and, you know, see how that sits with me. Um, and then that's just kind of uh, progressed. I um, went on a celebrants course and the, um, that synchronistically fell into place because my dog groomer told me about it. And I was like, oh, OK, well, I'll have a look. And then when I looked, um, it was um, the course was full. And so I, I emailed them and she said, no, I'm really sorry, it's full. And then the next day I had an email to say the person's cancelled. Would you like the place? So I was like, yep, <laughs> yep OK. <laughs> so, okay, so it's like, OK, we're following the breadcrumbs. So that's how the celebrancy um, came around. And also as well, um, I undertook um, I've done quite a lot of bereavement training on, with adults and children. But also as well, um, I was um, interested in the death doula, the soul midwife kind of thing as well. So I'm going to do the um, uh, the death doula training as well, um, which I think that um, uh, will broaden out. But I'm assuming that it's kind of like some of the training that I've done, but it will enhance um, other future work. So for, for people that are not familiar with that idea of a death doula, can you explain a little bit more about that? Well, death doulas um, uh, are um, there for people at the end of their, um, their life. So they support them with compassion and they may sit with them. They may do light touch massage um, and those kind of things. And the reason that I was interested in it was because when my mum was um, passing, I kind of did the death doula stuff without realising that that's actually what I was doing. So it was very natural to me. And it kind of like gave my mum permission to, to let go, which I think is something that we all struggle with, giving ourselves permission in life. And it was kind yes. of what we we have to make sure that things are OK and that people are OK. And I think with the um, the K uh, as you transition and that people, you know, and it might be that you might not have somebody there at the end of your life um, that might be a family member or a relative. And you might not want it either. You know, some people just don't. They want to be on their own. Um, and make that transition and that's okay either either or but I think that it's kind of for me I use those skills naturally anyway so I just was interested to go and see how if if at all I could enhance the skills that I've got and, and that makes absolute sense and I, I know what you're speaking of when when my mother was was very close to dying I found myself doing the same things um, and and really it is I mean that whole process from the time she were diagnosed with cancer, we both knew that it was, it was, there was only way it was going to end. Um, and it was like, okay, we had to go through the process of the medical stuff to get permission yeah. for her to just release and let go, as you said. And I think that's yeah. very, very true. Yeah. 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 And wow. also as well, I think that um, we, you know, we kind of like, we, the, it's just that sometimes, we, you know, when we, we have our pets and we want, the, obviously we want the best for them as we would for ourselves. And not always when we lose a human, do we find it easy to grieve or we may not grieve. And I especially know when I've worked with men that they've held on to that grief. It might have been a mother or a father, but the animal, when, when we lose an animal, it tappers in tap us into that vulnerability the softer part of ourselves yes. um, and we can just assume that we're grieving for our pets but actually we're grieving for the losses that we've had in our lives but it's almost like the animal gives us that permission because of that unconditional love that we felt with our beloveds it's almost as though that gateway opens into deeper grief and deeper loss that makes a ton of sense. Um, and, and so that, yeah. yeah. So one of the things I find is that in veterinary medicine, in the US anyway, and perhaps it's not the same in the UK, but it's, if you as a pet owner have gone into this process with a very ill pet, they're going to the internist, they're going to all of these doctors frequently, I find yeah. that it's really hard 
for the pet owner to to get permission to say this is enough this is yes. this is only creating more suffering and do you find that's the with the folks yeah. you've worked with that that's much of their experience yeah i've worked yes and i've worked with a range of experiences where we're, i've had a person whose cat walked out the door and never came back and there's and for her there was no closure um that, yes. because the, she didn't know so we were able to work with that to to uh, for her to understand that process and i think that there is it becomes very clinical and i think that's the same with everything and maybe that's because you know as a, a professional if you like that there is a detachment a sense of detachment because you couldn't be involved in every emotion that a person bought but it isn't to brought in but it isn't to say that that emotion is not valid that process isn't valid that you know you're not being heard is not valid because you have a right to be heard and a right to to ask those questions and for that to be reciprocated and heard as well yes. and i think that it, and because I think of the clinical aspect of things, it can appear cold and it can appear heartless at some times. But I think us as individuals and humans have to keep having our voice, keep having our say, because we can speak for the animals. The animals can't speak for themselves. Exactly. And, and yeah. I think that, you know, whether you with with our human family, I mean, that's such an important thing as well, especially with COVID to have someone that can help, that can speak for you and yeah. convey what your wishes are. Yeah. You know, okay, we've think, reached this and that's too much. Yeah. And it's time to, to focus on finding yeah. peace in the spirit. Yeah, and also as well, I think you're right. I think it is with COVID going through it and not being able to be there with your beloved at that time. It's inhumane and we have inhumane practices. Yes. And it's like we need to be changing things. But I think it's it's rather than be frustrated with that, which, you know, I, I could imagine that, you know, if that happened to me, that would be really awful. It really, really would feel heartbreaking. But sometimes we don't always know the divine plan and we don't know the plan for that animal either and it's like i can you know relate to my mom when my mom was um, in hospital and dying she saw us all that evening and then after we all left she then chose to pass okay. on her yeah. own yeah yes. and i with animals they have their soul contracts their soul journey just the same as ours and we as humans might not like it um but in actual fact, if it is the process and it is the best for that animal, then we have to somehow give respect to that and honour that journey, however painful well that said. might be to us. Well you said, know? yeah, because it's yeah. the same. It's the same situation with animals in yeah. veterinary hospitals because of COVID. Oh, yeah. We their their advocates can't go in with them, and so that makes it very hard for us. But again, this yeah. is. These are the um, agreements we have made, I guess, is a good way of saying exactly. to say it. Yeah. Yes, I definitely think so. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, so, part of a big part of what you're focusing on now is celebrating the passage of an animal or a person, yeah. but I think you're, you're, yeah. the majority of your work is focused on pets. And, yes. and you've been doing that sort of locally in the UK, but also you're beginning to to help people do that via Zoom. And yep. so if you could sort of describe that process, you spoke spoke about that so eloquently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this, the, the ceremony is to celebrate and honor the life and the journey and the love that you have shared with your animal, because it's really, really important. And nobody gets that any more than you do because it's yes. your journey, your life, your relationship, you know, that's your confident, your best friend, your buddy, the yeah. person that's been there unconditionally um, in on those tough times for you, on those happy times for you, that's never judged what you're wearing or what you're saying or just how you look. It's just that this is me and you can be you fully and openly with this beloved. Um, and it doesn't matter what, um, you know, whether it's a horse or whether it's a, a hamster or a rabbit or a rat or whatever the animal is, it's your unique relationship with 
your beloved. And the idea around the ceremony is, is to honour that. And it might be that um, it's it can honour the, the, the person because it's bespoke to the person, to the family, to the animal. And it could include poetry, nature, flowers, personal stories, songs, and so much more. Um, and it would include, you know, any reference. It doesn't include any reference to religion, but you can if you wanted to. That's entirely up to you because it's a bespoke ceremony. So it would be literally how you might want this to be. And we'd meet initially to talk about it and the idea that you might have. And, and you know, we could work together on that and what you might like um, and the time to be spent in that ceremony. So how you would like the ceremony to go along with my suggestions because it's your ceremony. So you'd receive a copy of that service beforehand so that you can be certain that it's kind of like um, all your wishes are taken into consideration. And if it's not in the UK, then we could do that over Zoom or Skype, whichever suits. Um, and, um, and but initially is that first um, meeting that we have. So I can get a real understanding of your relationship with your beloved um, and um, the, 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 the funny stories and, the, and the, the way that they were and how, how important um, your journey is. So from the time that the animal came into your life to the time that they left, there will have been a transformation of you. So you will have been in a very different place from when you first had your pet to when they leave this earth. And it's almost like that's their journey, their journey of support, their journey of unconditional love, their journey of beauty to, to bring you that joy and to be with you on that part of your journey. So it's to honor your journey as well as your beloveds. That makes sense. And then it seems like that's a way to give thanks mm -hmm. to that, that yeah. beloved pet that we have just lost for helping us yeah. to change and grow through that period yeah, of time. Absolutely. And to know that by the, their name, their photograph, the image, a song, um, a funny story immediately connects you on that heart level. They're immediate. The energy is always around us. It never leaves us. And we will. I've had people say to me, well, how how when I leave this this earth plane, will I recognize? Will I go and find my beloved? Will my beloved be there? And your beloved will recognize the essence of you that soul essence of you, and you will recognize that soul essence of your beloved. Yes, yeah. And, you know, when Hannah was, my assistant was getting getting us sort of set up with some graphics and things like this, she found this beautiful photo, or actually she probably made it, but um, there's a photo of two dogs and one with uh, uh, wings on his back and so the caption is the the dog that is still present with us is saying you know they still talk about you all the time and he says yeah. yes I know <laughs> because yeah. it it is I mean they do get it and I think yeah. with with our people that we have lost as well we are yeah. still in communication with them yeah although we may yeah. not receive the responses that we were accustomed to when they were living yeah, and I think that's the thing, it's being open to how you might get signs and symbols, how you might, yes. um, you know, um, receive and think, oh, they are still here. You know, with humans, we might see a robin or we might see a flower that reminds me or we might hear a bird song or a song on the radio. And that's exactly the same kind of things that we would get about our pets. And yes. immediately we think about those things. The energy is there. The energy yes. is there saying, oh, you me you remember our lovely times yes. and so we draw that energy closer all the time yes <laughs> and boy does yeah. that help in so many other planes I mean yeah. if we can we yeah. can see beyond what is here and what can often even though we are in comparison to much of the rest of the world um, even though yeah. we are living a very privileged life sometimes it's hard to see it I mean, the joke is yeah. about first world problems, but indeed, you know, they are, they are problems. We have the opportunity to, um, yeah. to live a, yeah. a much, a much easier life, but the, um, yeah. that allows the emotional components of life to come through much more loudly. And I also, yeah. And I also find people, so in my experience, I've had many animals before, but I've had one sole animal. 
And that's one sole animal, um, which is my Miss Molly now. But it's it, the connection is so different to all the animals I had before. I know the reasons that she's in my life. I know what she's teaching me right now. And, and it's kind of like, I'm so grateful for that. Um, and she gets me and all those things, but it's on a, we're connected on a soul level, a different level um, to animals that I've had before. And I, but I can really understand our journey together as, as it's progressing along now and kind of like where I was when she came into my life and how many changes I've made in these last five years as well. Yes. And my little soul buddy has been there with me, you know, right so on. it's, yeah yeah absolutely and um and it just gives us that it gives us that uniqueness of sensitivity and a deeper compassion and a deeper empathy to connect with animals and nature and all that that unseen because animals we have that un, unseen unspoken communication so yes. we just get it. we get it on a deep, a real deeper level. And so, you know, it, we know when they're poorly, they know when we're poorly and we don't have to say anything. They just know because they're instinctual. And so therefore they want to comfort and we want to comfort. So it takes us into a different energetic space when we have um, beloved soul companions. It really, really does, because we're much more open hearted. And like I, I said to you earlier, we can only when we love so deeply, we grieve so deeply. And actually what we're grieving for is potentially that lost little part of ourselves. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I, you know, when we were talking earlier, you said as well that mm -hmm. because we have loved our, our companions so deeply, it as they as we lose them and we feel that emotion of loss it taps into other times of loss that perhaps we haven't dealt with um, yes. or really or we think we have but there's still a little yeah. bit more yeah 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 and i found that on my um, on my journey as well um and especially i found that with men as well it was it felt more natural to group um sibling because they could allow themselves, you know, we, uh, animals touch us, I, I believe, on a different energetic level that tells us it's okay. It's okay. Yes. Yeah. And maybe and we I, just know that. I don't know. I, I think you're right too. And I'm sorry, you're cutting out a wee bit, but, but I think what happens is, is that because they approach us with unconditional love, we are able to feel and love more deeply and more fully because we're not yeah. fearful that they will hurt us emotionally. Does that exactly. make sense? Yeah. Yes. And, that, so, and some people treat animals more than they do humans. Because it's yeah. it's safer, yeah. honestly, you know, yeah. and, and I get it. Yeah. We've all had, we've yeah. all sort of had some sort of wound, wounding within our yeah. lives. And, and yeah. then when you get to the age that you and I are, um, either yeah. you begin to move past the wound and use yeah. it as as a tool to help yourself and to help others or, why, or you, you don't yeah yeah but, and yeah. I think that's why like with the cosmic crone I thought the cosmic is the that universal love and the crone is wisdom and we don't have to wait it's not it's energetic cycles rather than linear cycles of maiden mother crone it's the you know we can be wise at any age it's how we deal with that wisdom and use that wisdom from our experiences that takes us into that energetic state of wisdom. Of exactly, growth. exactly. Yeah. And that's sort of something else I wanted to bring up too. I mean, we are most prepared to deal with emotions and feelings when we are experience, experiencing a loss of a pet or a family member or, or a friend that you have loved deeply. But, but we don't have to wait till then, do we? I mean, there, <laughs> and, and so yeah. if, if this is something I would encourage mm. folks to think about is if yeah. you feel like there's something this dog is trying to get me to get, get, yeah. you know, get in contact with Debbie or someone else that you trust to help you understand what it is they're trying yeah. to get you to get. So notice because everything is a mirror to us, everything is a, re a reflection. So there will be something that that animal's behavior or attitude or or displaying that actually is reflecting where you are energetically as well. And yes. um, 
the more that we can move emotion out of the body, the lighter we can be and the more transient emotions become. So they're in, they're out, they're in, they're out. It's when it's stuck um, and grief energy is heavy energy. It's very yes. heavy energy and it needs, that's why we feel it so powerfully because it needs to be shifted. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. otherwise it just becomes uh, yeah. unbearable, literally. Yep. Yeah, yes, and, and that's yeah. I've had to hire sleeping peacefully on my mat, lap earlier. Um, so when, when Debbie and I were talking before we started the yeah. um, the broadcast, we were talking about all the heavy, awful stuff about death and, and in veterinary medicine. You know, unfortunately, I can provide the ultimate relief, but it comes yeah. at quite a cost. And so Hio yeah. was like, ah! you freaking out and now that i've you know she she is the yep. most powerful mirror i've had or at least i'm paying attention now she's i'm calmer she's sleeping in my lap all as well yeah. in Hayo's yeah. world yeah. but if i if i get stuck in a oh god i'm having a bad day and uh, my health is not great today and blah, 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 and i stay down there she is just wigged out so yeah. it, it it really she's she's forced me to really pay attention to the energy yeah. that I'm putting out there. And I, I think also as well, animals live in the moment, they live in presence. And we as humans forget that. So, th so theirs is, we want to play, we want to have fun, we want to go for a walk, we want to have a sleep. So they're very present with the way that they are, which is that we can, as humans, life can be very serious. And, um, <laughs> and that's not to, to distract the seriousness of life, but it's to help us to realize that actually we need to live more in the present. We need to be more aware of, you know, that, that heaviness of seriousness if you like um and that yes. you know it, it's, we need joy and laughter and fun and that's not to distract through anything but it's to bring a more lighter approach to life yeah and and i mean and and honestly that is something i have really struggled with because yeah. Well, yeah. you know what i did for a living is so it can be so heavy there was a lot of joy in it too but there's yeah. a lot of grief and loss. So yes. how, you know, so so I get clues from Hayo about what I should be doing, and from from Pepe, our cat. Uh, but what are what are some things that sort of a common thread, if you will, that pets have told you to convey to their people uh, to help them be a little bit lighter and more joyful? Yeah, um, that I am free. I am happy. I'm um, uh, uh, running around with um, new friends and my buddies. I have no physical conditions that um, I had when I was here on the earth plane. My spirit is free. Um, I'm around you all the time. When you're in joy, I can get closer. When you're in grief, I can feel that grief and feel the heaviness of it. But when we move into joy and memories and love and laughter and talk about talk about the the relationship that we had then i'm like um more freer i'm more closer um i'm giving you lots of signs um you know you may remember this you may hear a, some, a song on the radio i am around um love is eternal and yes. life is infinite it is infinite it is you know the physical body has to leave has to die but our spirit, our soul lives on. And it, it's so much lighter when it's not in the physical. So Amen. it's be more present. Yeah, be more, be more um, open to, to things in life. Be more curious, be more, take much more of a lighthearted approach. And kind of like, just remember Remember the, the love, the honoring, the respect that we gave each other. Remember our journey together. Um, and to understand that your grieving process is unique to you. But remember the self-love, to be tender, to be kind to yourself, be, to not be so harsh on yourself. So all the softer things that, um, that love brings can bring out in grief. That's because beautiful. you can't. Yeah, you can't stop that grieving process. You can block it, but ultimately it needs an outlet. So, so channel that grief into creativity, into walking, into 
um, speaking into being active about things, you know, um, honor the grief process for sure, but do things that really matter to you, that really, really matter to you. That makes sense. We spend, yeah, we can spend so much time on, on pursuits that don't take us anywhere. And yeah. Yeah. we all love Facebook because we can do things like yeah. this, but it can also yeah. be one of those things that takes the joy out of the daily living. So yeah. If, yeah. if you remember your pet sort of nudging your arm to get you off the phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And put to put those boundaries in place um, that actually, do I want to be spending my time doing this and asking yourself lots of questions along that way? You know, is this, does this make me happy? Does this, yes. does this, does it constrict me what I'm doing or does it open me into expansiveness? How do I feel about the things that I'm doing? Because we know that everything has a, a life, you know, in this life um, and um, that everything has a life in this life and that it, we're here to live it. We're here to live it on our terms and animals allow that. They give us, you know, a lot of confidence animals um, to do things and to go places. You know, um, like I know with my Miss Molly, we've been to, we just jump in the car and we'll go off um, and we'll go and visit different places. And it gives me the confidence when I first had her to say, uh, you know, this is important. This is important to me. Our journey, our life is important. And, you know, um, and, and it's kind of like, it just helps us to step into a deeper sense of ourselves. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the freedom to just get up and go. And I mean, and so years ago, I looked at Pepe, I'm like, ah, oh, geez, you're my role model. <laughs> because he, he just takes life as he pleases. If he's tired, he sleeps. If he's hungry, he, um, he can't quite open the refrigerator yet, but he eats with gusto. He's very happy for the food he gets. He's yeah. very happy to show love and affection. And he's yeah. also very happy to sit and look at nature and be content yeah. with that. So yeah. I, I've learned a lot from him over the years. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, exactly. And I also think that, you know, at the beginning when we first um, go through a loss, people are kind and people are understanding, but it's kind of like, then it's like, well, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to do. And the thing is, if you can be around the people that can really get you without actually having to do anything, but are there listening with an open heart, that is so, so um, much more than anything that you could wish for, because you know they were listening for the right reasons and you yes. know that they were there for you. But ultimately, grief is a lonely journey. You have to go through it at some stages in your life. You have to go through it. And, you know, I certainly know when I lost my dad many, many years ago, I blocked that grief for 10 years. And then when I started on my mediumship journey, it was allowed to be expressed that grief was allowed to be expressed. So I knew, th knew then that that was the right path for me and that I could use that experience and channel those experiences of my own um, to help and support other people to understand that grieving process and to be there for people and to say, it's okay. It is really okay. You know, I've got you, You're, you are okay. Yeah, I right. can go with these deep emotions, I'm there. Yeah, right. I've had many myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah. you, it's kind of yeah. like any skill. You have to have had that experience yourself, whether, whether that's uh, grieving, whether that's doing surgery, you have to have had that experience in, other, in order to help others yeah. get through the experience too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, Debbie, this has been just a a ball in a strange sort of way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. 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 But it, I, I, you know, and I really appreciate the work you're doing, especially the ability to bring a celebration of a lost pet's life, uh, because that is something that, I mean, 30 years ago, people, life has changed so much. I mean, it changes so fast and it does go faster and faster. Yeah. But 30 years ago, when I started practice, um, people would drop their pets off to be euthanized and just because they couldn't bear yeah. to think about losing them 
losing their emotions more than anything else to having to look at their emotions. But over the, over the, you know, in that same period of time in South Carolina, we went from 90% of the pets being chained up in yards and outside all the time to 90% of the pets sleeping insides on the bed and often under the sheets. So we're, we're getting wiser emotionally and able, more able to open ourselves to love. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Any, any, any last comments you'd like to make that you really want, want folks to hear? I think that um, just remember that, again, you're unique. Your relationship with your pet is unique. So honor that. Honor that grieving process within yourself. Don't give yourself a hard time. Be kind and be, be gentle on yourself. And um, remember, there will be people that say it's only a pet. There will be people that are at work that don't get you. There will be family um, that don't get you. But there are people that do. And that's right. the main thing. And I think in the book, I've got a little quote here by Rumi, which is goodbyes are only for those who love with their eyes. Because for those who love with heart and soul, there is no such thing as separation. Beautifully said, Rumi. Yeah. Rumi is so profound. Still, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes, yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. many thanks, Debbie McLeod of the Cosmic Crone, and I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally. Take good care. We hope this has been of use and service to you and your pets. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye. Okay, and I think we're off the uh, we're off the air, so to speak. <laughs> Great. Oh, it says recording still. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's okay. just, yep. yeah.